So it seems like the theme of these past couple videos has been welcome to Alex's kitchen and it's a little echoey in here and the lighting's not great, but you know, science happens here too. So I was trying to think of what I wanted to do a video about this week and I was like, oh man, I don't, I don't know. But then I realized that I had to do dishes and when I do dishes, I think about science. So if you're me and you don't have a dishwasher, you spend a lot of your time doing dishes thinking about dish detergent. And it's actually pretty cool how dish detergent works. So each of the molecules of detergent have two separate parts. They have a hydrophilic end and a hydrophobic end. And what that means is that they have a hydrophilic end, which is water loving, and they have a hydrophobic tail, which is water fearing. Now this is really helpful when you're doing dishes because you're dealing with two different things. You're dealing with water and you're dealing with often greasy residue left on your plates. Now grease is also hydrophobic, which means it doesn't like mixing with water. So when you mix water, grease, and detergent, that detergent sort of bridges the gap between the water and the grease which don't naturally want to mix. Now the hydrophilic ends of the detergent will bond with the water while the hydrophobic ends will bond with the grease. Now all of the hydrophobic parts will want to be as far away from water as possible. So they will begin to form structures called micelles. Now these micelles will have all of their hydrophobic tails on the insides and all of their hydrophilic heads on the outsides. So you have these little spheres of detergent molecules which surround the grease molecules and they can be easily washed away with water. Now these kinds of polar molecules actually have a huge important role in your life. Every single one of your cells is surrounded by a cell membrane. And this membrane is composed of molecules that are actually very similar to detergent molecules. These molecules are known as phospholipids. They have a hydrophilic phosphate head and hydrophobic lipid tails. Now there's water both inside and outside of your cell, so all of the hydrophobic lipid tails will turn in together and they'll form this bilayer which creates a barrier between the outside and the inside of your cell. Now this cell membrane helps to regulate everything that goes in and out of your cell. Depending on its properties, things can either diffuse through passively or they can be actively pumped in and out of the cell or they can pass through ion channels. There's a lot of different ways when things can get in and out, but that control is determined by that phospholipid bilayer. Now there are other molecules involved in your cell membrane. There's cholesterol which helps to keep the membrane fluid and there are proteins which can help move things in and out of the cells, but your phospholipids comprise the major component of it. Next time you're doing your dishes, give your detergent a little bit more credit. Go forth, do science. And guys, I kind of forgot to tell you something. Google Science Fair. So if you haven't heard of it, the Google Science Fair is an international science fair run by Google and it's open to kids all over the world from ages 13 to 18. So if you have a cool idea, you can enter the science fair and I've actually been doing some stuff with them. I posted on Facebook and Twitter about the fact that I was hosting some hangouts and it's awesome. So all through the Google Science Fair, they've been hosting hangouts on air on Google Plus with really cool scientists and technologists from all over the world and all different fields. And so I got to participate in one where I was talking with Dean Kamen, the inventor of the Segway, among many other awesome stuff. I talked with Esther Dyson, um, who is super cool and she trained to be a cosmonaut and go up to space and she's awesome. And I also talked with John Haffernick, who works on zombies and so they're parasites, they get into the brains of bees and they make them do crazy things and it's awesome. And so I don't know why I didn't tell you guys that I've been doing this here on YouTube, but you can watch all three of those things. I'll put the links in the doobly-doo. And if you're between 13 and 18, this is an amazing opportunity. If you have an idea, you can submit it to the science fair, you can do a project, you don't have to be associated with the school, you can do it in a group, you can, it's really, really cool. You should check them out at googlesciencefair.com. They're awesome and they've let me do some cool stuff and so you should do some cool stuff with them too. I think it's such a great opportunity and I don't know why I didn't tell you guys until now. And so I might be hosting more hangouts in the future and I'll let you guys know about those and so, yeah, so my slogan is go forth and do science and theirs is it's your turn to change the world and that's also really, really awesome. So you should go check them out.